Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's uh, nice to connect with you. Again, it's uh, Keith Henry coming to you uh, as President and CEO of the Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada. And I'm uh, pleased to be with you uh, to provide, uh, of course, our, our updates from as a national Indigenous tourism organization to our members and, of course, partners and communities that work uh, in tourism across this country. Uh, this is an important discussion. Uh, this is now the third video in the series that we've been creating uh, the last uh, while to, uh, of course, uh, deal with what's happening to Indigenous tourism in this unprecedented time. Um, so today I'm going to share, we have uh, uh, some, I think, important discussions. Uh, Federal Tourism Minister Jolie will be joining us shortly, uh, which I'm very pleased that she's made that time to speak directly to all of you uh, out in the industry. And I know that I, many partners are on here that are non-Indigenous. Uh, and we know that tourism is such a major driver for this entire economy. The fact is uh, tourism is worth over $100 billion to the Canadian economy. Um, we know that it employs roughly 1.8 million people. And in terms of Indigenous tourism, we know that we have roughly 40,000 of those people working in our roughly 1,900 businesses in this country. So these are very volatile times. Uh, we know COVID-19 is having a huge impact to many sectors. And uh, we're doing all we can to make sure tourism and specifically Indigenous tourism is uh, supported through the process. So really quickly, I want to remind uh, our members that to get the most updated information, go to our website. If you're not on our email distribution list, make sure you get on that because this week we're going to be coming out with a few things. And starting tomorrow, which is going to be my first update for members today, uh, ITAX released, is going to release a new 2021 uh, uh, action plan. The action plan itself speaks specifically to how our organization is responding to COVID-19. What we've done as an organization in response is one of the many tourism bodies in this country uh, we're working specifically to revise our investments. And just so the members know, uh, there's three things we're going to be focusing on in, in this, uh, basically, this new times. First of all, we're creating a new stimulus investment fund. So the challenge we've got today is there's been a lot of EI support for the employees in this country and through various companies. And in our industry, it's roughly 40,000 people working through, again, roughly 1,900 businesses. But... Um, what is our biggest challenge is, is making sure that the businesses don't disappear, that they survive, they don't become insolvent. You know, obviously with the downturn, we're not going to see a lot of tourism and, you know, the main tourism or the largest part of the tourism season will be upon us on, you know, starting in May and runs roughly till October each year. So this plan addresses what we're going to do with the Stimulus Development Fund. We're going to be launching a new grant program of roughly $25,000 per business to ensure that we maintain uh, some level of support for the businesses. So what our, I thank our board, uh, they approved this this morning. They basically went ahead and, and gave us authorization. Now we certainly have a cap on how much we can help, but I wanna let our industry know that it's critical that you watch for this and it'll come out again as I started. These, this, these uh, applications will start coming out, we're hoping by Friday. We're gonna have a one month intake and then we're gonna start releasing uh, resources. So if you're not on our email distribution list, go on indigenoustourism.ca forward slash corporate. When you get there, there's a large box uh, that you need to just enter your email in and watch for that. This, this will come out very shortly. So the first priority for us right now in this, this unprecedented time is to make sure we help you in the small business community under, uh, uh, get some support through our existing resource. So what we've done with this plan is completely realign our investment strategy. The second objective of our updated plan, and this will also come out tomorrow if you're on that distribution list, will be around ensuring the stability of regional Indigenous tourism organizations. We, we decided to make that a priority because the fact is, uh, the reason Indigenous tourism wasn't growing all that uh, quickly from 2000 to 2014, 15, was, and we assessed this quite thoroughly, was there was a lack of coordination. So we don't want to lose the infrastructure we've been building in the provinces and territories. So this is organizations like Indigenous Tourism BC, Indigenous Tourism Alberta, Indigen uh, Manitoba Indigenous Tourism Association, Nova Scotia Indigenous Tourism, all these agencies and, and organizations we've been building to make sure they maintain a sense of stability is critical into the future. So we're going to, we've actually increased in the plan, the investment that's going to those provincial territorial partners. 
And third, uh, for us, as uh, in addition to, that I will speak on the, the updated auction plan, is really around uh, stabilizing ITAC. Uh, we've got a certain group of, of, of team members. We're trying to create efficiencies. Uh, there's been some attrition of staff. We've got roughly 20 to 25 representatives that work within the organization. Uh, we want to maintain a certain level of operational know-how, and so we've agreed that we need to stabilize. So again, the three main objectives of our updated plan significant increase to stimulus support for businesses on the ground those will start uh, applications will start by friday we're going to launch this it'll be open for a month secondly stabilizing provincial territorial networks and third of course making sure the itac is here to continue the work we're doing now there's other things in the plan you'll note and we have a whole list of kpis but what i would say to everyone here today for the businesses, please look to this it's really as around how we're going to address covid it'll come out tomorrow and i thank our board um, the second thing I did want to quickly touch on before the minister gets on the call is the stimulus fund program, and it'll be a simple application uh, that'll, uh, again, sorry, I'm not used to this camera, but the, it'll be the development uh, stimulus fund application for Canadian Indigenous tourism businesses. We've tried to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, we're trying to do our best to uh, help as many businesses. Uh, we know that we can't help all 1900 and we know that EI will help many of the individuals out there. But if you're a small entrepreneur, if you're not a member yet, membership is free. Sign up through the process right away. We don't know what you need if we don't have it. And we've been doing a series of surveying and that. So we certainly are aware of those those things. So so those are those are things that ITAC is doing. Now, of course, there's been a number of other federal announcements and we've got a whole uh, as if you go to our corporate site, indigenoustourism.ca forward slash corporate, as I've been updating in the last two videos, there certainly is a significant amount of information on uh, other stimulus support. So the government of Canada announced, for example, $10 billion for business support. And so that's through Business Development Canada, Export Development Canada, the regional development agencies. We're continuing as ITAC to sort of address how we're going to best interact with those agencies. In the meantime, I know some of the businesses have been applying, and we know that we're following a bit through the the the, the, the gap to the to the. I guess we're following a little bit through the the these programs because a lot of those programs are being invested in, in existing business development work. So, for example, if you're a small business, you will have to show a balance that shows that you're viable. As we know, a lot of our indigenous tourism businesses are are being developed and have been growing over the last few years. They certainly are building profitability from, but from a balance sheet perspective, that literacy just hasn't been hasn't quite there yet. So we're trying to really figure out how what's the niche that we can help in that regard. So what I would say is look to those resources. Certainly reach out, reach out to your banks, reach out to. But as our focus today is really around helping the actual indigenous owned and operated small, medium sized, large businesses. We know there's a number of you out there. I just want to say thank you to all. I know there's a lot of comments here coming through that I'm seeing, obviously, scrolling up uh, through that. So um, I just want to say, everyone, thank you for obviously listening into this sort of platform. I know that many of you are following, and I, and I do appreciate it. And if there's any questions you have, I can actually see the questions uh, the way I've set it up today and certainly welcome any question. So I think um, uh, uh, what I would really hope, again, as I keep reiterating, the key will be over the next few days is to really make sure you look at the action plan. Think about your applications for the provincial territorial uh, uh, support for those organizations. They will get that shortly. And think about the stimulus grant fund. And that's really going to be our focus. We're kind of triaging this. And we know the reality is, as we all can see, is that both domestic and international tourism is going to, you know, be very, it's it's not going to be non-existent for some time. And for a lot of our businesses that require that sort of uh, stability or or operational support, you know, we may or may not see much of anything this summer. And as we know today, if you've been following the list of things that are going on around us, you know, some provinces have declared more states of emergency. So there's not going to be a lot of even within the provinces, the ability to have uh, people traveling even uh, outside of uh, just going to the grocery store and essential services. So this has still got a, uh, quite a bit of room in front of us, and we're working our way through that. Parks Canada today announced that they're shutting the parks down, of course, um, and that's no surprise. I think we're going to see more and more of that. So uh, the minister will be calling in very shortly, and of course uh, she's calling in in like two or three minutes here. Um, I just want people to uh, – we've got a series of questions. I'm going to ask Minister Jolie, and I just want to say how important it is that I hope members and partners on the uh, that are watching today realize as ITAC – 
you know, we don't speak for the whole industry. We're just speaking for our network of, of businesses. But, you know, uh, we're very involved with Tourism Industry Association of Canada, bringing that voice forward. Uh, I sit as a board member of Tourism HR Canada, and we're trying to figure out on the employment side always how to deal with these things. Uh, and we're, so we're very integrated in a lot of the networks and a lot of us work with various provincial territorial marketing partners. And that's really all we need to do to keep working on, on supporting the growth of our business. And again, I restate this, that 2013, or sorry, 2000, pardon me, 19 was another significant year of growth for Indigenous tourism. We just did an entire survey. So to see what's unfolded uh, with the impacts of COVID-19 has been, you know, it's been shocking for many of us, I'm sure many of yourself as well. So I see Joe Yuri's on there. I want to say hi to Joe out of Alberta. Uh, Lance Cardinal, I want to say hi to you as well out of Treaty 8. Uh, appreciate you uh, watching today. Uh, I see Brandy, who's done a lot of uh, uh, media work with us, uh, of course, uh, with her videos and so forth. So thanks for uh, watching today, Brandy. Uh, and I know that uh, Jill, I see Jill Lard is there uh, uh, out from all the way in Newfoundland, Labrador. So um, we're just going to give it a minute here for the minister to be calling in. And of course, uh, this is going to be uh, very interesting to see what she has to say. Um, what else can I say to everyone right now? I think, um, you know, in terms of the actual uh, um, optimistic points of view, beyond what Minister of Tourism says today, we actually, uh, as ITAC, have, are just on are working with Indigenous. So Indigenous Tourism falls between a couple of, 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 of federal departments. One is the Federal Ministry of Tourism with ICED and Minister Jolie, for obviously she handles small uh, 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 official languages and business our ECDEV, pardon me. And then we also with Indigenous Relations, and it's both Crown Indigenous Relations and, of course, Indigenous Services, which Minister Miller and Minister uh, Bennett. Uh, very important. So we, we garner uh, uh, investments in the industry through that, and we've been doing that since 2015, largely through there. This week, we're working with INAC, who are also are trying to, sorry, I call them INAC, there's different names, but I, I can't get away from the old names I used to use. But uh, we are working right now with uh, indigenous services to essentially um, deal with that. Here's the uh, new investments in development. So here's the minister. Hello, uh, good afternoon. It's Keith here. Hi, Keith. It's Melanie Jolie. How are you? Good. How are you doing, uh, Minister Jolie? Very good. Very good. So thank you for making time. I know that there's a lot of our folks here online um, um, just interested to hear some perspective. And I've just got um, um, so maybe some questions I wanted to start with, too, if that's okay, Minister? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, uh, it would be great to go through the, the, the questions. Do you want me to do just a bit of an introduction in terms of what we're doing in, uh, with our economic measures? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so I'll start with that. Uh, well, thanks, Keith, for all the work you're doing uh, and ISAC. We've been working now for nearly two years. And obviously, uh, you know, getting to know what ITAC is doing and what you is, is, is you are doing as well, um, you know, people in the industry and in the indigenous tourism industry can be proud of having strong leaders and a very well organized group. And that helps me as a minister in charge of the sector to afterwards work with my colleagues to represent your interests. And so, thank you all also for being on this call because this is also helpful to gather information and also trans transfer information. So what we decided to do last week uh, was to really try to help people all across the country first and and also businesses. Uh, and so the first thing we did was to really, really uh, make sure that people could have access to EI, uh, even the self-employed that people didn't have enough hours uh, accumulated to have access to EI. So therefore now uh, the uh, definition is broadened, and we now have a social safety net uh, where everybody, uh, you know, everybody uh, can be felt that they are protected and that nobody is falling into the cracks of the system. Um, now we're also increasing uh, the kind of child benefit by 300 bucks uh, for children and also for child, and also uh, we're. Uh, we're, we're working on tax measures to make sure that there's deferral of taxes, of pay, repayment of taxes. Now, uh, what we're trying to do also for businesses directly is really to uh, work on the issue of liquidity first. And now I'm very much 
aware that in the tourism sector, it may not be a question of liquidity because it is an, an issue of net losses. I understand that when tourists are just not there, they're just not there. So it's not as if you're reporting the demand, you're actually uh, seeing that there's no revenues coming in. So, uh, and that's why I want to have this conversation with you. Now, in terms of for certain business operators, uh, the issue is more liquidity, how they can go through the next couple of weeks and months. And so what we decided to do was really work with our banking system uh, to make sure that by protecting the banking system, bankers and banks would take more risks because the risks would be assumed much more on by the federal government. And uh, they would uh, decide to, uh, you know, lower the interest rate or be, uh, be much more um, open to the deferred repayment of, of, uh, of debt. And so uh, that's what we decided to do with the CDC also. We decided to invest $10 billion more uh, to help the BDC to provide uh, more support to different uh, businesses and also BDC for those who are exporting. And uh, also we decided to put a 10% weight subsidy into place uh, to a maximum of $25,000. And we decided to also uh, that, that uh, businesses across the country would only have to uh, pay their corporate taxes uh, and their reporting uh, starting uh, August 31st. So deferral of corporate taxes uh, payment. So that's, uh, that's also a way to make sure that you guys can uh, really go through this uh, this crisis and keep as much money in your pocket as possible. So this is what we've done. This is the first step. The idea was to stabilize uh, bit by bit uh, the economy. Now uh, I would like to hear from you, answer questions from Keith, and uh, and just to tell you that you know we're there uh, to help. And, uh, and I know these are really, really difficult times. These are like the anxiety is high and, uh, and I would have loved to talk to all of you in different circumstances, but I'm there for you. The government is there for you and to help you out through this. Well, thanks, um, Minister Jolie. And I think um, you've answered a, a lot of the initial discussion I was going to um, facilitate with you. But um, what I, I just, again, I think that uh, you know, obviously, um, there's been a lot of resources put into the the system uh, of uh, regional development agencies, Export Development Canada, Business Development Canada, and of course, they backstop a lot of the banking financing that uh, a number of our members, whether they realize that or not, may or may not be accessing that. So the the I think that's just to clarify, that's the liquidity support that the federal government has pushed out there. Um, now. Now, when you're talking that $10 billion in support, that, that wasn't just for tourism. That's for all small businesses in Canada, correct? That's for the BDC in general. Okay. So that's for the lending capacity of the BDC. I think my, my point to all of you listening is, um, you know, the idea is do you have a question in terms of uh, really having access to cash rapidly, talk to your bank. Your banker should be able to accommodate you, particularly if you uh, were a strong business just before this and COVID-19 is just disrupting all your business model. I think that's very important. Now, um, if, if there, that's not the case, we should be, we should know. He should know, I should know. Uh, and also, I think when you look at the PDC, the BDC has an indigenous banking unit. So there, is, there, there are some funds to support indigenous businesses. Indigenous tourism was booming before this was happening. It was outpacing all, in, all tourism sectors across the board, across the country. So I think that in these circumstances, uh, you know, you should be proud of the businesses you've been able to, uh, to create and, and to establish and the idea is to make sure that you can go through this and that we can help you and, and hold your hand while we're going through, you know, walking that bridge in order for us to meet on the other side of the shore when the crisis is, is done, that the, you know, health risks are down and that we can be much more in a stimulus package 
um, you know, uh, vision and, and, and to try trying to bounce back. So I appreciate you actually just really acknowledging the important role of Indigenous tourism to the Canadian tourism industry. I think it's really great to hear your leadership around that. I think the people online are really appreciating hearing that. I'm hearing a lot of, or seeing a lot of positive commentary to that that you're not able to see, but certainly I think it's important. That we, <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's important because I think during this time of crisis, I know that many of our small businesses, our entrepreneurs, our community-owned enterprises, you know, it is a time of great stress and fear and layoffs. And, and we know that there's been a safety net created, but I really think it's important for you as our, you know, our, our federal tourism uh, minister to, to just reinforce that it's important. What do you, can I, can I, just a philosophical question for everyone. I think it's really good for people to hear this because it, it really instills hope in people at a time when we know it's, we're all going through various levels of challenges around COVID-19, but what do you hope Indigenous tourism in Canada will look like post COVID nineteen? I mean, it, we we do need to start shifting the conversation to yes, there's challenges for programs, yes, there's challenges for finances. We can solve those, and it's going to be on a case by case basis. Is largely what I've been trying to say as I talk to our business community, uh, and we'll do that. I think hopefully they're hearing that today. But what's our vision like? What what is what do you think the vision of Indigenous tourism needs to be post COVID nineteen? And we know this will eventually run its course. Mm -hmm. Well, the idea was to make sure that we would be in stabilization mode right now. We were in crisis mode now. The idea is to make sure that people can have access to social safety nets and that businesses can go through this crunch and can survive. And uh, let me tell you, I've developed the, uh, the latest, you know, federal strategy on tourism, national tur uh, tourism strategy, uh, you know, key you know, we worked yeah. together on that. We had also uh, uh, Chief Darcy Bear uh, that was uh, catch one, uh, the white caps that was uh, on our advisory committee. And the idea was to really put an indigenous lens on everything we're doing. And that's exactly what we'll be doing in the context of supporting the tourism sector and, and also bouncing back. To your question in particular, well, I know that the sector is extremely resilient. I think that, yes, it is a sector that was one of the first hits, but I think it will be one of the first to bounce back. Uh, I have a vision for the sector, and I think it's supported by many of your members, where I hope that we can use this crisis as a way to increase um, really much more domestic tourism, I think we can we can have Canadians uh, proud of being uh, in a safe country that has a strong public health system that has people supporting each other, and that uh, we can bit by bit it, it is easier to uh, discover the different indigenous cultures. Uh, you know, the Mi'kmaq one in Atlantic Canada to the Tsleil Suit in Br British Columbia. And I think that Canadians are the ones that uh, travel the most per capita in the world. We love going to Florida and Mexico, but I think that this is an opportunity to travel more the country and support more our tourism, uh, our tourism businesses, including obviously indigenous tourism. I think that would be good for businesses, good for people, good for reconciliation. And uh, by doing that, also, we'll be empowering Indigenous tourism businesses, and we will be able to invite the world to come to see us. Uh, and obviously, everyone watching and listening will be part of, of uh, showing the world what we have to offer. Right. I think that's uh, well said, Minister. And I think, um, like, uh, I think people are going to be really uh, pleased to hear that because uh, what ITAC is doing, I, I spoke at the beginning of the show about uh, releasing some of our new objectives. What we're also doing to support the efforts of organizations like BDC, EDC, and of course the banks, mm -hmm. and of course uh, others. And so we're doing a stimulus grant. What I didn't talk about is as we were shifting the conversation to recovery and of course, uh, obviously post-COVID, uh, how we're going to move forward. And so, for example, in the marketing that I didn't get into, but when people see our new action plan come out tomorrow, our marketing team will be working with, of course, Destination Canada and many other partners on, okay, do we need to rethink 
where our priority markets need to be coming out of this. What did we learn coming out of this? And clearly we're all gonna learn a lot coming out of this and so will our businesses. So we wanna take a new uh, lens on indigenous tourism nationally. And then of course, how do we bring more strategic marketing plans down to the business level across the country? So we're we're really more coordinated. I think we're all realizing the importance of, of, of that uh, industry-wide coordination. I, I hope people see that because certainly that's, um, that's very helpful to us. So we also believe, I, I'm uh, an Indigenous tourism, we know it's going to be another s significant driver for tourism in this entire country. And, you know, it's time to rethink what we do post-COVID. And we and we know that's that's a logical outcome. Um, I, I want to um, just, from the business perspective, small business perspective, obviously, that's been our biggest challenge right now, Minister. I know you and I have talked about that. I've talked with your team about that. I really appreciate the efforts you're making. Is there anything specific you think, else? I know we can report the case by case. I know ITAC, we're going to be working closely with BDC. Uh, we're going to try and uh, bring more close efforts with EDC and others, uh, regional development agencies. Is there other things you think we should be doing or can be doing uh, that you might want to just give out a uh, handout as information to the members? You've made some good uh, recommendations already, but is there anything else you want to leave? Because that's definitely the biggest challenge we're having. It's cash flow, as you said earlier in the show. Um, really, that's what it is. So. I think, you know, there are more than 200 Aboriginal financial institutions and uh, we'll be certainly working with, uh, with NACA, so the National Aboriginal Capital Corporations Association, mm. to see how we can work with them and have an Indigenous lens to the uh, liquidity issue that the government is facing. So we'll remain in, in contact with them uh, and, I, and I hope that would be helpful to your members yep. to know. Um, I think that's the first thing. Second thing, uh, just to finish on your point on, on bouncing back, uh, I'll be, uh, I'm reconvening my uh, advisory committee uh, that helped me uh, create uh, the uh, federal strategy, uh, the tourism federal, uh, the federal tourism strategy. And, uh, and these will be the people helping me uh, to, actually find ideas uh, for, for the stimulus package. So uh, I said, I talked about Chief Darcy Bear, but obviously if you have other ideas, feel free. Uh, because what we're trying to do is really look at the short and, and, and medium term issues, really help people, uh, you know, uh, get through this, this issue, this crisis. And meanwhile, have enough time to think uh, to and have the right people around the table to be able to uh, suggest ideas uh, to the government and the prime minister mm -hmm. to uh, be part of the stimulus package. That's really I'm I'm well I think I just want to re recap that for everyone in case they didn't quite fully get that. But first of all, I think that the proper channel for business, some of those are stimulus resources, I think is great if it goes through the NECA network, National Arbiter Capital Corporations. We know there's roughly 200 of these AFIs across the country. I think that's very, I mean, a lot of our small businesses work with that network, of course, um, that we can, we can, we can, of course, leverage that with our stimulus grant program we're doing, and we know that network well. So I think having that indigenous lens, I really want to say, I hope that comes to pass. I think speaking for a lot of the folks that are watching this, I think that's really critical. Um, that's really a key network for Indigenous small businesses, and I really applaud that you're, you're, that's being taken under serious consideration. The second, thing, the second thing I think is I'm really glad to hear you continuing to work your committee work because I've been part of that before and as well, Minister, and I know that you don't just set up committees unless you're serious about the recommendations. So I really think that, um, that having that Indigenous voice to that committee level is really important. So I really say thanks for doing that. Um, I, I just want to let you know, people from across the country are, are really, I think, um, appreciating this. Uh, I just want to mention a few names. Uh, Scott Hudson from uh, Northern Lights Dog Sledding. He's watching. He's been a recipient of some of our awards. I, I don't know if you've met Scott or not, but um, these are the people I'm talking about. I see James Calpar here. He's a, uh, you know, up in Haida Gwaii. He's got a, a, a business up there. He does uh, sort of water touring and that. And, and certainly I know he's feeling, he's a, another entrepreneur. Uh, Juanita Marwa from Métis Crossing, uh, one of my own. I'm Métis, so it's nice to see the Métis folks are uh, chiming in here. But I mean, I think people just want to know that there's a hope. And I, and, and, I, and I think what you're doing today is really important to us. 
Um, and I'm not really sure um, what else you want to say, because I know I said I'd keep you until 7.30 in Ottawa time, 4.30 my time, but did you want to finish with any closing comments or anything you want to say? Well, you know, um, it's unfortunate that uh, we can't see each other. You know, I can't go to your own business venues um, because of what's going on right now, but my thoughts are with you. Uh, I think uh, ITAC has never been so important uh, to defend your interests, but also to make sure that we have a vector of information that we can work together. Uh, because I, I hope that uh, we can do this again later on in a couple of days or weeks uh, to make sure that uh, you understand what uh, we have uh, worked on as a government, but also to see uh, while we are taking decisions on a macroeconomic Level, how it is landing in your own realities and how it make it makes sense to your own business and uh, that's my role as a minister to be in charge of the economic reality of people so if we could work together and continue what we've just started I think it would be really worth it and that will keep uh, basically the anxiety as, as low as possible and develop a, a trustworthy uh, relationship yeah, Minister, I, I can assure you, anytime you want to come have another discussion on, on the platform, we'll make that happen because the members and our businesses across the country are critical, critically hearing, needing to hear these timely voices. And for example, ITAC, uh, you, you, I mean, uh, some of the commentary I'm getting is that there's, you know, for example, uh, for a large percentage of Indigenous owners, startup and existing, the process may present challenges. Big banks are a challenge. Yeah as many okay. have followed the community futures path bdc is challenging so i we we know that and i've heard other commentary on here that i haven't had a chance to really read to but what i'm saying to people is that the best we can ask from you is to create an indigenous land we've presented options yeah. i like the naca option i want to also let our members know though itac is also facilitating a coordination of this now we're taking a, a much more aggressive role Sorker of development Teresa rider We'll be working with BDC, EDC, and others to really figure out how do we triage this so to help businesses walk their way through this if they can. Also, we've created another thing that I announced that some of the people that are now writing on here realize we're doing our stimulus development fund, which will come out Friday. That's $25,000 small business grants. It's based off what we do with our micro grants. And, and just so you know, Minister, uh, Indigenous Affairs has come up with some support. And I don't want to, I want to manage expectations, but we're going to be helping. We hope to help an initial 140 businesses, just to put that in the context everyone here. This, uh, but our goal is ultimately to try and reach 640 businesses across the country. So we know it's difficult. And right now what we're trying to do is help inject some liquidity directly to the businesses through a grant process. Yeah. Um, so just so you know, Minister, I, 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 and and so I'm happy that, so I, I really appreciate you working with your colleagues, Minister Miller and Minister Bennett to continue to support that kind of work. Cause we, we don't need to be everything, but we need to inject some direct liquidity as you or cash into the, into the businesses um, uh, uh, to try and keep as many of them afloat as possible. Um, yeah. I did have a question. Can I, do, do you mind if I ask you one question? I got a couple here that have really, they don't want to let you go yet. Is that okay, Minister, if we keep you a little longer? <laughs> it's okay. I can yeah. take two, two more. Okay. And then I have another phone call. Oh, okay. <laughs> It says, uh, one question I think is kind of a theme throughout. It says, if BDC is supposed to be supporting the Indigenous during this time, why are they denying requests from some of the small Indigenous tourism operators? And I know I, I've raised that, raised that to your office. I know you may not have the direct answer on that, but it's it's a, it's something we're, I just want our members to know we're, we're tracking this as well and trying to triage this. But any response to that? Yeah, if the BDC is not doing it, I need to know. And uh, we can find other ways. Uh, we certainly have in the West, WD, Western Diversification, the economic agency I'm in charge of. Uh, I know that uh, we've been working with ITAC to make sure that uh, there's funding that can be used uh, from the Canadian Experiences Fund to help, uh, you know, bridge some of the, 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 the you know, uh, liquidity gap that is happening. So, and the, there are also tourism funding uh, in other uh, agencies such as DEC in Quebec, uh, ACOA uh, in Atlantic Canada, uh, FEDNOR in Northern Ontario, CANOR in uh, you know the Great North and the territories. 
and also fed dev in southern Ontario. So uh, definitely that's something we can look at. And uh, I hear you about the Community Future Program. That's certainly something I'm looking at. Okay. And just so everyone knows, uh, we ITAC is triaging. If I, use, I hate to use that word, but it's the only way I feel we can justify what we're trying to or bring justice to what we're trying to do here. The regional development agencies, many of which you just mentioned, Western Economic Diversification, CanNor, FedNor, FedDev, all these, we're trying to, they're, we're, they're, they're being flexible with year two of our CEF program, the Canadian Experience Program. One ways we're helping add more um, investment to the stimulus fund. The other thing, though, is we continue to work with them to see if there's any other investments they're doing for Indigenous tourism. How can we align that? So just so those people that are asking a lot of questions here, uh, uh, clearly lots of dialogue happening uh, and very important. So, um, Minister, I just want to say I'm going to let you go now. I do want to finish off with some commentary with the rest of the, the online platform. But, Minister, please, um, uh, I will reach out and ask you to, to um, join me uh, as events unfold and as quickly as they unfold, because I think we want to give real time updates uh, and not necessarily in an email format, because that gets lost in a lot of people's emails. So I appreciate your time. I know how precious your time is. But I want to let everyone here know. I, I thank you, Minister, in front of everyone, because I, I these are not easy times. I know you're getting pressured. You don't just deal with tourism. I know you're dealing with other sectors and and it is real really challenging for the entire economy, but um, I do honestly appreciate that you're making Indigenous tourism one of your priorities, and I just need people to know that, and I say thank you for that. Thank you, and I must say, I always had a soft spot for tourism, so hey. Okay, well, you take care. Uh, good luck on your other call, okay, Minister? <laughs> yeah, you too. Take okay. good care, everybody. You know, let's, let's make sure that we continue to work together and, uh, and uh, you know, try to, to plow this through this. Stay, stay, stay calm and, and we can all car carry on. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you. Thank you. So everyone, I, I do appreciate, I know there's lots of commentary I'm, I'm watching here unfold, um, but and I know it's not easy. So we're trying to um, find ways to get liquidity into the system for Indigenous tourism specifically. So not easy. Um, we know that a lot of you work with the National Average Capital Corporation Network. I as ITAC, we're, we're advocating to get more investment. We asked for I, some of you just to remind everyone that may or may not know this. We've put in a discussion document with the federal government for $550 million or so in, 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 in stimulus money. Uh, we're now being asked to join a federal roundtable for this discussion. And what I'm hoping is it, it doesn't have to flow through ITAC. We would love to see it flow through the National Average of Capital Corporations. And then we find ways to leverage things with our ITAC and in our provincial territorial networks like Quebec Average all the rest of that network to see how we leverage these programs. So I just want to say to everyone, it's it's really important that we, we pull together right now and we give ourselves that hope. I want to remind people again before I sign off, get onto our ITAC email distribution if you're not there. There's going to be some important opportunities to apply for the stimulus grant fund coming up shortly, uh, as well as other key updates. So again, if you haven't been there, our main website is indigenoustourism.ca. Uh, or uh, that'll just bring you to the visitor experiences uh, for the general consumer. But if you want to go to our corporate side to get through the email to sign on, just go to indigenoustourism.ca forward slash corporate. And once you land on that page, we have a whole COVID page. We've tried to triage all the programs that we've talked about for the businesses. Now, the employees have other opportunities through EI benefits, but the businesses now is who we're speaking to today. So please look through that. Please get on our, our email subscription list. Please watch for the stimulus grant funding it will come over it will come out we're hoping by friday the launch should be a one month turnaround we're going to 140 businesses and then we're hoping to expand that to roughly 640 businesses by the third week in april but um we can't promise that yet we're still working through lots of discussion so let's start focusing on we're going to rebuild let's keep it positive we can rebuild we know we just heard from the federal minister that tourism will be uh, important uh, into the future I will be on the committee that's being discussed with the minister. Uh, that is one of the issues she brought up. Um, I am uh, looking forward to that. And I say to everyone, you know, we got We know we're facing incredible times, but it's let's. We know we can rebuild, and uh, we're just going to keep strong. Watch for the update tomorrow for the 2020-2021 action plan. You'll see what we're trying to do with our existing resources. Never mind the new resources working on and um, to that I just hope all of you are safe uh, on behalf of our board and our team we want all of you to be safe and uh, take care of yourselves we know it's not easy times but together uh, we know that uh, 
is the only way forward. So thank you, everyone, and uh, take care of yourself, uh, and I hope you're doing well. Keith Henry, President and CEO of the Indigenous Tourism Association, signing off.